So today's Apple event honestly felt like a boxing match because Tim Cook gloved up, brought on his team and started throwing punches at the PC industry, making all these crazy claims that these new Apple MacBooks infused with their new chips are just better, you know? It was so nuts that they even brought in the old dude from the Windows versus Apple commercials to deliver a final blow to you know where. Now, a lot of you are probably familiar with this chip because there's a different version in our iPhones. It's still using Apple Silicon, but it's named a bit differently and functions a bit differently. This new M1 chip is gonna enable a lot of great things. Like we have continuity right now between our Apple devices. You can get them to talk to each other. You can airdrop things. But the big thing by being able to run the same chip in everything is allowing Apple from other devices to run on other devices that are different, you know? So for example, your iPhone apps can now run on your MacBook. Your iPad OS apps can now run on your MacBook for true, proper continuity. Now this M1 chip is ARM, so it's more energy efficient, up to 60% more energy efficient because ARM in general or Apple Silicon just uses less power. And Apple's saying that this CPU, which is gonna be eight cores, paired with an eight core GPU, is gonna be three times faster CPU and up to six times faster GPU compared to current Windows laptops in the industry. Which ones are those? I have no idea, but those were Apple's words. The downfall to this is that you can only have so much RAM, up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and a two terabyte SSD. The first product they're announcing is the MacBook Air. And this is gonna be fanless. No more MacBook Air having its fans ramp up when you're using a browser. That's gone. It's not gonna get hot, it's not gonna thermal throttle to the point where it drives you crazy, and it's just gonna be quiet. And when you have all of this paired together, what you should get is better battery life. In fact, Apple's saying 15 hours of web browsing or up to 18 hours of video playback. This too will only be upgradable to 16 gigabytes of RAM or two terabytes of storage. It'll still come with a Thunderbolt port, or two of them at least, Wi-Fi 6, Touch ID, and run all the iPad and iOS apps as long as you upgrade to Big Sur. Oh, there's one thing you should know. If you're buying the MacBook Air, the base model has one of the GPU cores disabled, and that's probably due to the fact that there's no fan inside. So they wanted to make sure the thermal headroom was high enough so that these things don't throttle or, or, or cause any slowdowns on your day-to-day -day performance. Now, if you want to get the MacBook Pro 13, you are getting the exact same chip, the M1, but all CPU and GPU cores are enabled. The big deal with the MacBook Pro 13 is that you still have a fan, which means if you have a cooling solution enabled in a bigger chassis, the performance should be better because the, the clock speeds can be sustained higher for longer. Now, how loud these fans are gonna be will probably be the same as the previous model, but I don't think they'll be ramping up as often due to the fact that these M1 chips or Apple Silicon chips are a lot more energy efficient and don't produce as much heat. Now, you only get two Thunderbolt ports on the MacBook Pro 13, and that's because if you want four, you still have to buy the Intel model. Now, unfortunately, you can't hook up an external GPU. So if you were thinking about buying this MacBook Pro 13 and then connecting an external GPU to it, it's not gonna happen. This too is using the exact same form factor as the previous MacBook Pro 13. So you're still gonna get the scissor switches, the, the crazy trackpad, the good speakers, and of course the studio microphones. Nothing is different about the exterior shell compared to before but you will get better battery life, better battery life than the MacBook Air, up to 20 hours. And because of this thermal headroom, you'll get better CPU and GPU performance. Now, just like the MacBook Air, you can only spec this up to 16 gigabytes of RAM or two terabytes of SSD storage. And the last product announcement is the Mac Mini. This too will be using the M1 chip. All eight cores of the CPU and GPU will be enabled. There's a fan inside, it's a thicker chassis, so it too will have better performance than the MacBook Air. Now this Mac Mini, is not upgradable anymore. Like you could upgrade the RAM in the previous models, but you can no longer do that in any future Apple Silicon based device. I mean, everything is always gonna be soldered onto the motherboard, except maybe future Mac Pros. This might be a downfall for some of you and others you might not care because you're used to it already, but you still get the same sort of amount of ports on the Mac Mini, two USB-A, HDMI, two Thunderbolts, and of course, Ethernet. Like I said before, you cannot hook up an external GPU. The one thing I'm kind of curious about 
is how are third party applications going to run on Apple Silicon? Because what's gonna happen is you have Rosetta 2, which is Apple's translation layer. It's gonna take these Intel apps, translate them so that ARM can understand it and run on your computer. The problem is there's always a bit of a tax, a performance tax to that because it has to translate it. And sometimes you get reduced battery life and of course sometimes you get reduced performance. Now Apple did say some of the applications they did test actually ran very well faster than some of their current products that use Intel based systems. But one thing's for sure, based on all the applications they showed on stage, anything that's been built for Apple Silicon is getting a huge speed improvement. Final cut. Safari, basically any Apple app that's currently available. Now there will be more third party apps and you can still use your iPhone apps on your Mac, but Lightroom is coming out in a month, Photoshop next year, and hopefully Premiere Pro sometime soon. And finally, if you're planning on running bootcamp on any Apple Silicon based Macs, get that out of your head. Those days are done. Apple will not support Windows on any upcoming MacBooks, at least for now. That might change down the road. You might get some sort of virtualization, but don't expect it anytime soon. Now, are these computers gonna be faster than the MacBook Pro 16? Are they gonna be faster than a Windows laptop with a dedicated GPU or an H-series processor? Absolutely not, not yet. What they will be faster than is your typical Ultrabook. As long as you're running applications that have been optimized for Apple Silicon. If they haven't been, you're probably still gonna get better results on these Intel models. Now, obviously, I'm gonna be reviewing these things. I'm gonna be testing them out. I'm gonna test everything. Everything from gaming to creative workflows to even just simple web browsing. And the idea is to give you guys a better picture on how these new chips run. If you have any questions for my full review, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.